Today on The Garage Engineer, we upgrade our K40 laser to work with Lightburn. So in the last video, when we were working on the K40 laser, we'd gotten the laser from a friend, uh, Nick, at Run CNC. Didn't have time to work on it, and it had a broken tube. We had a temporary exhaust fan, a water pump, aligned the laser, and we found the Meerkat software to run the motherboard. At the end of the last video, we were able to get the laser to cut, but after doing multiple tests with it at off camera, I, I came to learn that the Meerkat software wasn't fully up to snuff to work with the uh, Moshi board. Now the Moshi board, if you remember, was the more like the original version uh, it was more of a proprietary board that the uh, resellers were using and you had to have their software which was terrible and their dongle and I couldn't find any of that. So the Meerkat software did get the machine running but it had a few quirks in it that I couldn't get a consistent cut. So I made the executive decision to upgrade the board. Now we could have gone with an M2 Nano which is what the board is currently in all the uh, K40 lasers that come with it. But I decided to go a step further than that and get a Cohesion 3D board. Now for my research online, I found that the Cohesion 3D board is the best replacement and is the top of the line card for any of your laser or you can even use it for uh, routered CNC machines. The kit comes with the board, I think some software on SD card and their power supply that they want you to use. So. Uh, pretty much the board has been created so it should be able to be plug and play with definitely the current M2 Nano boards. Uh, the Moshi board it is possible to use it on there. I'm not sure if we're going to have a wiring issue that we might have to do. Um, it might not hook be plug and play like the M2 Nano K40 lasers but uh, it does work so we, there's definitely instructions on how to get that going so we're going to try to do that. Now by doing that the, reason, the whole reason I went with this board is because we will then be able to use Lightburn to control the entire laser, which I love that software. I use it on my diode laser, and uh, it will be a definitely an upgrade to what we got here. So we this got packed up from the last time we used it. I had a few uh, other projects I had to do, but now let's get it unpacked and get it set up. So here's the Moshi board. We'll look at that when we uh, get it out. What I'm going to do is disconnect. There's only three sets of wires that connect the board. Let's get those disconnected and then we'll take the bo board and the metal plate that holds the board because we're going to have to redrill some holes because the Moshi board, is, I mean the uh, Cohesion 3D board is a little bit smaller so we're going to have to make our own little mounting plate or mounting holes for it. So let's go ahead and get that taken out and then we can go from there. boards it's almost plug-and-play there is one thing you've got to modify you've got your ribbon cable that goes here uh, and it got, plugs in directly here you've got your y-axis which is a wire that plugs in up here that was taken off of uh, this port right here and then the only difference is is this got a six pin uh, power connector and we've only got four pins here we're only using this uses only three uh, of the pins you've got your laser power 5 volts 24 volts and ground all we need is the uh, ground and the laser 5 volts uh, or to tell it to go on and off. So let's get the cable pulled out of the machine and we're go and uh, modify the 6 pin connector that used to be here so that it will be able to uh, fit. We're going to use the, uh, the wire blocks here to plug the wires in so we'll do that right now. So this is the uh, power cable that we need to get off to and modify. It's got a little clip in the back there, you just kind of separate it so that you can pull the the block away. I don't know if you can see how well you can see it, but there you go. So it just pulls it off. You can't see anything, can you? So it just kind of pulls up and off there. And it has a little clip 
retaining uh, the clips on the other side, but this is the retaining part of the so it holds it in. So I made a little diagram. Here's our six pin connector from our Moshi board. You've got the uh, laser five volts of the gray, and then you've got your 24 volt power, which we won't need, and then you've got your ground right here. So the ground goes to pin number two on the Cohesion 3D board, and the laser five volt goes on the pin number four. So I'm gonna mark these with tape so I know which is which, and then we're gonna have to tape off our 24 volt, so because uh, it will not be used since the Cohesion board has its own power supply. We'll mark this the 5 volts and this the ground. Now we'll just take something sharp and there's little clips. You just push the clip down, pull the wire out, and there you go. We'll just use our electrical tape and we'll go ahead and tape off the 24 volt lead since we don't need that. And there you go. It will clip off these two ends so we'll have just a bare wire so we can stick in to the board. Okay, so we've got the board. So we're going to stick the wires into two and four respectively. The ground is going to go into two. So let's we'll stick the wire in there. And then we'll screw it down. And then I was calling this 5 volts. It, it, I think it is 5 volts, but it's the pulse width modulation of the laser firing it on and off. So this is how light burn, I think, controls how much power when you're doing grayscale. Um, and that's the lead. That's the control lead for that wire. So we're going to put that into 4. And that's the only two wires you need. You don't need to hook up the 24 volt uh, power from the, from the laser power supply. It's going to have its own. So we'll get those put in place out of the board to make it a little easier for us so we don't have to fool with this when it's set up. Now let's take the Moshi board holder and take it apart and then let's drill new mounting screws for the uh, new board here. And I think we're getting pretty close. I mean, that's really it. We'll just plug in the other wires once it's in, but uh, that's pretty much all you need to do. Make sure you save these standoffs when needed it because you don't want your board to be grounding out on the bottom onto the piece of metal, so keep these. This is the Moshi board. This is the MS-10105 version 4.87. That is uh, the, I think older, there's two different types of these boards. I think this is the older, this might have been, this is the updated version, I think. I'm, um, but still, this is way old. This is made back in, I think, 2004. 15 so we're talking so we're talking it's uh, seven years old uh, technology has really improved since then the M2 nano boards are a lot better than this one but uh, we got what we got we'll get it fixed I did do a test fit I put the plate back into the uh, machine and I wanted to see where the board was going to hit because we need the power to come out from the side and it ended up that I did find four holes that matched so uh, we don't have to drill anything, so that's good. So we'll just put the position it here, and then uh, that will be a great spot for it. We'll do that. Maybe if we do it sideways, we can line it up a little better. Looks like these two bottom holes are a little too small. So I'm going to just get a drill and we're going to dr uh, make it a little wider. There's got to be some type of jig they use in the factory. There's got to be some better way to do it than everything keeps falling off. Or maybe this is the way they do it, I don't know. 
time. All right. So we got everything spaced. That looks pretty good. Let's get the nuts on. And I'll bring it back when we get uh, everything tightened up. One of the screws was stripped out, so we're going to use this one. I hope it's not wider. I got a different one. There you go. That's why the other one was so hard to get off, that last one. Because it was stripped from the factory there. So let's tighten all these up. And I'll be good to go. We'll put the bolts back into the uh, bracket here to hold it to the machine. And we'll do the wiring. All right, so now that we've got the board back in, we've got our power. We're going to hook that up. Then we've got to take our Y-axis right here, and it's got two little locking mechanisms there, so you can only do it one direction. And you put it into the Y part of the board. And then you've got your... Uh, Ribbon cable, this controls the x-axis and the limiting switches. And we'll just stick that right in. There's no locking on it, just kind of kind of mash it in there. Like that. So that should be it. In the last video, we noticed the laser's uh, ammeter wasn't working. So since then, uh, I ordered a new one. So I'm going to install that now, so then we'll have a good reading of what amperage is going through the machine uh, to the tube uh, while we're using all this. So this is the old meter that wasn't working. Let's see if it's the right size. I didn't even check that. This one's a little bigger. I have a link to this one uh, below in the, the notes to the uh, Amazon link. They all look the same to me, so I don't think it really mattered which one you get. So this is a little bit bigger. Hopefully the hole in the back of it's uh, the same. So it slides down. I think the mounting part is different. Let's take a look. Let's get you up here. So these are the mounting nuts. One. I think the hole will be just fine. It's just the face of it was bigger. We'll get this off. And get this one. We'll go ahead and take the nuts off of this one right here so we don't have to fool with it while it's in the machine. And there's some washers here. But it is the right amperage, so uh, or millivolt milliamps. It's just a different size meter. Let's take a look here. So they're both 30 milliamps. Uh, it's just this face, the newer one, is a little bit bigger. And then when you stick it in the hole, it fits in the hole right, but the mounting holes are in the wrong spot. So we're going to have to drill some uh, holes for that out so we can mount this thing. Okay, let's see if it fits here. So the problem I'm having is that dia this diameter fits, but then it hits a bump right here on the end, and it's hitting the end of the metal there. So I'm going to have to notch out a corner right there just so that it slides down. But otherwise, everything else lines up just right. Alright, we made our notches cut out. And... Fits like a glove. All right, let's get this screwed in, and we can get the machine going here. So the software that comes with it, Smoothieware, that's the uh, programming that everything runs on. It's already preloaded, so all you need to do is stick it into the board. Let's see if we can get you good. It goes right here. Let's see which way does it go? Here, just like that. 
On the side, I went ahead, plugged in our, uh, this is basically the printer cable USB cord that goes, that does the communication, and then this is the power supply supplied by Cohesion 3D, uh, the 24 volt. They both plug into the side of the board. So now we're just going to hook up to the computer through USB, and we're going to uh, see if Lightburn can recognize it. So I've got everything plugged up. I'm not going to uh, fire the laser. We've got that turned off. The uh, safety switch is off, so uh, I'm not going to, we don't have the water flowing or anything. We're just seeing if we can move the gantry around is really the big thing of what we want to make sure that works. So we're going to turn on the machine here. All right. I don't know if the USB, the board has to be turned on. Oh, it's powering up. There are the lights down there. There should be the four green ones. The two on the outside should be solid. The two on the middle should be blinking. I see one red. I can't tell if two red uh, lights are glowing. We'll find out in just a minute here. But they should be on. One of the red lights being power and the other being the communication. So now we need to set up um, our uh, light burn so that they can talk. And this is SmoothieWare, so when you're setting up your device, I'll have a link to all these instructions on how uh, Cohesion 3D has a great pictorial on all this and how to set everything up. So I'll just do a link to that so you don't have to follow uh, along with me. Alright, so now we've got everything hooked up. We just need to uh, connect the laptop to the uh, Cohesion board. So we're choosing the COM. Okay, so now we've got the laser on. We're going to get the board connected, uh, the laptop connected to the board. There you go. And now we're, it's homing itself. So let's see if we can move it manually, or not manually, but with the computer, with the uh, laptop. There you go. So it's moving an inch. We've got control. I'm going to do a home button, and it homes up top. Perfect. That's awesome. So we got it working now. So let's hook up the laser and test see if we can do a test fire, and then we will uh, see if we can do some test cutouts. So we just got a fan hooked up as our exhaust. All we're really doing is trying to draw the smoke away from the lens. We're not really going to do anything that we're going to need to vent out into the atmosphere yet. Uh, we will get to that. We've got our water pump hooked up and it's flowing nicely. And we've got everything plugged up. Okay, so first I want to do a test of the machine to make sure the laser is firing. So we're going to switch power on. Alright, I put a piece of paper underneath the lens. This is just my air assist, uh, something I was doing before, my little temporary makeup of that. Uh, but what we're going to do is turn the laser switch on, and let's do a test fire. Now right now I'm going to make the, uh, turn the wattage down really low. It's like five. 5 milliamps, so we'll see what happens there. We are getting the amp meter working now. So that should show 10. So that's perfect. So now we can actually see what our amperage is, and that's kind of, well, we're a little off there on what we're measuring. But that's because we were doing in line with the multimeter last time. So we are getting a Mark, here, let's see, we can do it again here. This is at 10 milliamps. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna turn, so now let's get uh, light burn set up and uh, let's see if we can uh, control the machine with light burn. 
Okay, so we got light burn set up. We've got the Garage Engineer logo as our test piece. And we've got a piece of cardboard. We're not going to use air assist on this one, but we will. Uh, we're just trying to see if it will burn um, and we'll see if it even cut through. I've got the machine set at, it's going to be about 12 milliamps. I'll watch it and I'll keep it around uh, 10 to 12. And then, but I've got the uh, light burn set up for 80% of power, so it'll be even less than that. Uh, 2,500 millimeters per second. Let's see, what does the final product look like? There you go. Not too bad. It says 25 seconds, so let's see how long it takes. So I've got some setting issues. Uh, one, I thought I set it to home. This, this is set to top, rear, uh, right, rear as home. It came here. Uh, it came down, uh, or I'm sorry, left rear is what this machine likes to do naturally. But I don't know why it came to uh, bottom. So I'm going to have to check that. And because of whatever setting is, it's inverted or upside down. Um, so I got to figure out why that's cutting that way. So it's probably just some software uh, issues that I've got to switch. But everything's looking all right. It only went up to about 11, 12 milliamps. So that's basically kind of where I want to be. Um, don't want to go any higher than that. Uh, you can push it to 15, but being this old of a tube, uh, we don't want to go that far. So uh, let me play with it a little bit to see if I can get everything situated and I'll bring it back. Okay, we're gonna try this again. So I think I had in the software, in the device setup, I, I needed to put the origin where Lightburn sees the origin, which is the bottom left. Even though the machine homes to the left top um, or back, uh, I should have put the origin being front left whatever you want to call zero zero here so let's give this a test and see if that fixes the problem well that turned out much better you see all that flame I'm gonna to have to turn the uh, probably turn the power down and uh, air, air assist but I want to try to cut it out so let's let's do that's one time I think it takes three let's try two more uh, trips around but I'm gonna add air assist onto here to help eliminate some of that. If anyone's curious about my temporary uh, air assist we've got a boba tea straw zip tied to the lens with duct tape to some tubing. The tubing then goes to an air gun which is held the trigger is held on by a clamp. The air gun's held down to the table and then I'm running at about 20 uh, around, running around 30 psi so it just needs a little bit of uh, air movement so that it will uh, get the smoke out of the way so let's give it a try we run, run it once now let's get, run it uh, two more times to see if we cut through flames um, like you did before. It's, I haven't changed any other settings, power or speed or anything. But that's the difference of why you want air assist. Now this is probably a little too much for um, cardboard uh, being at 80% but we're just testing it right. I'll do a true gradient test later but look it's actually cutting out already on the second pass. At least that's the top layer that's cut out. We'll check it out and see if it cut all the way through. Oh, that was, was that two passes? Well, it stopped. Maybe that was two passes. I wasn't paying attention. That was happening so fast. Let's take a look here. It didn't go all the way through, so we'll have to play with it. I mean, 
but I am happy with the results that I got. And actually, the focus too needs to be tested. But it did cut through the top layer. If I can peel it. So I don't know how far it went um, to the bottom layer or not. It was getting there. I think it went through the middle. It just needed. It should have, maybe the third pass would have done it. I'd have to look, review the footage to see if it actually did three or not. But what we can do is let's try it again. And we can watch. And I'll watch it this time and I'll let you know. So the reason why I didn't realize it did the two layers because it was doing each letter twice at the same time, not going through all of it and then repeating itself. So that's why. So it did go through three times and it still wasn't strong enough. So we probably need to slow it down a little bit, turn up the power a little bit. Uh, I'm not really sure, but it, it's getting there. Um, I can see all the way down to the bottom layer. So it, it, it wouldn't take much more to get it. And it could be the focus could be out a little bit too since we haven't really tested it. Um, but I'm pretty happy with it. So for all the hard work that we did, taking a broken K40 laser and even an old one too, that was 2015 version of the K40s. So this is before the, even the M2 Nano board. So this, um, we didn't get the Moshi board working perfectly. Uh, but I do appreciate Meerkat helping out with that software. It, that Meerkat software does work well with the M2 Nano. It just had issues with the, the Moshi board version of it. I am happy that we are able to uh, easily use the Cohesion 3D board. Uh, I give it thumbs up. I think it's really easy. Plug and play. We did have to do a little bit of that wiring. Just be careful. They got great instructions on their website. And uh, if, I'm glad, I'm happy to be able to use Lightburn now with the K40 because uh, I love Lightburn. I, that's, I think that's the best laser software out there right now. So um, if you want to check, I'll have all these links down in the, com in the notes section below. You can see all the links to the websites, different things, um, all the parts that we've used. And uh, I appreciate you sticking around and watching both these videos. And I hope this inspires you to, to fix up an old laser. Remember the ABCs of making. Always be creating. Till next time. So I wanted to leave you with a little bit of bonus content after the uh, build that we did today fixing the K40. Uh, for the connecting the fan, I just used some old extension cord uh, that was on some type of unit. I don't know if what it was on a dehumidifier or whatnot. But the good thing about it is one supplying 120 volts to the uh, microwave fan. But also, it had a ground lead. It ended up being the eyelet was too small. I put one on myself, but I never trust these mechanical connections. So, what brings us to the bonus content is anytime I get a chance to do some electrical work, I would love pulling out my uh, soldering iron. This is a new one. This is the Pine Soul. If you haven't seen the video, I have a link to uh, when we first unboxed it and discussed about it. It is wonderful. It makes it a joy to do any type of um, soldering now, so I never have to groan about pulling out the old weller. Uh, what it is, it's a USB-C connection, and it's just connected to a 65 watt power supply. So that's all you've got is just this power cord to your uh, soldering iron. So we'll just connect it up directly with the power, and I haven't got a battery unit for it yet, um, so to make it like portable. But still, even plugging it into the uh, wall is awesome. So now what we'll do is we will push the... Uh, see, I haven't used it enough to... There, uh, no, that's the... DC. Let me get out of it. All right. Look at that. Watch. I don't know if we can focus on that. Look how fast it is heating up. I mean, it's, it will only take literally about eight seconds we're almost there to get up to our optimal temperature which is at 380 so we're already at uh we don't have to wait for a long time for this to heat up to the proper temperature it is done so now we can just get into soldering 
So like I said, the quick little project we've got here is I just want to do add a little bit of solder onto the eyelet so it has a better connection and won't come off. It's not always necessary, but I like doing it better than uh, just having the physical connection to it. So we are at 380 degrees. I'll probably crank that up a little bit because we're using kind of a thick gauge wire. So I just have to put the plus button and I can take it up to, we'll do 440 there. Hold it up. Oh yeah, it's smoking. Look at that. I can't believe it. I, I love using this thing. It takes the hassle out of... It was always the soldering iron, waiting for it to heat up, waiting for it to cool down, is what was always deterred me from doing it. I thought I would just skip. Oh, well, I just do a physical connection to it, and that'll be all right. And this is, there you go. Look at that. I can feel it in the wire. So 440 was probably a little too much, but that's all right. And then we just shut it down. And then see, it's blinking. The blanket means it's on the cool down period, so we can just put that down. And you can see right there we got, that's a lot better joint. And I can feel the heat all the way down here with that, those 440 degrees. So it got pretty hot. Hot enough to get a good solder connection on that thing. Alright, I'll put this back together and let's move on to our a little special pro su surprise I got for you. So I couldn't leave things without having one good cut so I've got a, a little surprise here we've got something set up on light burn we are running at 1250 millimeters per minute and at 100% power which is about 13 milliamps so we will uh, give it a run So in honor of the new Batman movie 2022 that just came out, which surprisingly is very good, I didn't think they could have uh, made it uh, any better compared to all the other Batmans out there, but it is very good. This is the new Batman logo, and there you go, it cut through, he had a little bit on one side, it didn't cut through, but this is four passes, that's the key. There you go, see, it cut all the way through. Four passes at 1250 millimeters per minute. And let me get it out of there. And that is the Ropats Batman logo. Check it out if you haven't seen it yet.